I can see that my brother brought the prevent defense in with the bishop and all these guys up here, so I got to be pretty good here. But that's not going to stop me because I see a bunch of drillers out there and that gives me a lot of confidence. We're going to have fun here today. First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you to, for showing up here this morning to honor my dad. And in my mind, he was a legend and uh, just he made two Hall of Fames and in my mind, he was a Hall of Fame of dads too. He was uh, an incredible man and changed the lives of many young men and women that attended Bakersfield High and, and other areas. But before I get started, I need to thank my little brother, even though it's hard for me to do, but he's, he was a, he's been the best caregiver for both my parents. Uh, Susan, I wanted to thank you for allowing them to come into your home, to give them the best care, provide the best doctors, provide everything. And uh, you live by the word and, uh, and you stand by the word. We appreciate it. Before my dad passed away in the last year or so, we had several talks and he said, uh, if there's a eulogy, I hope you give it, because you had a little humor and fun. And, but he said, I have a couple things I'd like you to always to let the people know. And Craig's addressed it a couple of them. Number one, he said, he was a very fortunate man to marry the love of his life, my mom, Dorothy. And he said, I want to let you know that it was the best decision he ever made in his life. And I thought that's my dad. He also um, was blessed to have children. We had five children. He did. And I was his favorite. Craig was second. <laughs> was third. Fourth. And that's the truth, Bishop. It really is. Drillers aren't already, not, I promised Craig I wouldn't talk about Garces because the drillers beat him last year, so that's all I need to say. <laughs> and um, I felt great. Well, one of the things that um, over the last week or so, Craig and Susan and I and my mom received tons and tons of notes about how my father influenced and, and changed their lives, always for the good. But the last five or six uh, cards we got, they said, your father was sweet. And you hear the laughter back there. Uh, I was betting if we got Gary Frank and Pat Scrable and Rick Van Horn and all these guys up here, and we lined them up here and I said, describe my father, sweet would never come up. <laughs> Craig mentioned he loved to kind of get in your face a little bit and put the finger. I have a permanent hole in my chest. <laughs> I was the first one to get one and, and uh, and not the last either. But he was, uh, he, was, uh, he was a great man. He was a man of faith, as Craig said, and one of the things that I admired him the most, my dad prayed every day. Um, he, he just was a man of faith, and I asked him one time when I was, I think, a sophomore in high school why he prayed every day, and he said, it's real simple. He said, God's been great to me. He said, he's given me the love of my life, my mother, He's given me great kids, especially me, and then um, um, a job that I loved and had passion for, and then with the birth of the grandkids later on in life, it, it, it just carried on. But he, he loved to pray, and every day he did pray, and if there was someone that was ill, he would, he would pray, and I think that was a great example for Craig and I and Susan and Nancy growing up that he was a man of faith. And that's always been important to me. We, um, but when I was going to uh, Bakersfield High, I really didn't know. I mean, I, I grew up on the Griffith Field. I think I was conceived on Griffith Field. Uh, <laughs> I, I bled driller blue. In fact, if you look, if you look at the casket, it's driller blue. It's dr it's, it is driller blue. But um, I, I really didn't know how powerful my father was at BHS. So my freshman year, true story, second day of school, 
I'm downstairs in the basement with my good friend Pete Mitchell. And Pete and I were minding our own business, trying to look for a locker, and these three nine-foot men came around us and said, could we borrow your lunch money? <laughs> Pete, being a little quicker than I am, said, I don't have any, but he might. <laughs> but I wasn't going to let Pete outdo me, and I said, I don't have my money, but you could probably get some from my dad. They said, who's your dad? I said, Don Harrison, and they backed up. They said, I'm sorry, whatever you guys need, no, no one's going to touch you ever again. And Pete Mitchell yelled out, let everybody know there's a new sheriff in town and we're going to take over. It's a true. Now, Bishop, I did change the word on that because that wasn't the real language they used on us when we were in our room. I just want to let you know. I was scared of them. But uh, my dad enjoyed the coaches, the officials, the everyone he came in contact with, and it was so great to hear the stories of, of how my dad changed their lives. I got a call from John Wyatt. I got a call from a lot of the other ones where they said when when I was down, your dad picked me up even though I was at my lowest point. And I think that's, that's the great legacy my dad's going to leave with a lot of people in here. Um, he just, he, he went the extra, extra mile. Craig, you mentioned that we went to Cottonwood Road. And I remember that, but you didn't realize dad was recruiting. <laughs> Craig. Craig, Craig was two years younger, didn't get the idea why these kids were coming to BHS and carry the football. But the thought was there. The thought was there. We, we liked it. I don't want to mention recruiting again, so. <laughs> That's my second zing, but you have to read the paper. Um, my dad, uh, you know, I closed my eyes the other day and I looked up to heaven and I saw my dad. He was embracing my sister Nancy. He was embracing his dad he hasn't seen in 70 years. And then to the left, I saw him embrace Briggs again and Sergeant up there, the, the original BHS. And uh, I knew they were excited because today was the first day of double days up there. And, and uh, <laughs> driller football bled in my dad's, in my dad's uh, mind. I'm going to leave you with a uh, small little poem that brought tears to my eyes when I was a young kid that my dad told me. And uh, it's called, Why Drillers Always Win. I don't know if you remember this, Craig, but I'll tell you the part where I get teary-eyed in this one. It starts out, it was on a Friday night at Old Griffith Field. The mighty drillers came running out of the tunnel. The rams from Garces came out and kneeled. You know, <laughs> Catholics like to kneel. I don't know why, but they do. They just do. That's not the part that made me sad. The drillers scored once, then twice, and won that special game. That's when the tears flowed. That's <laughs> drillers won. The players ran onto the field, and the victory bell went clang, clang, clang. We asked our famous father, why do the drillers always win? He smiled from ear to ear and said, I'll tell you, sons, I'll tell you Sunday, my dear sons. So on Sunday morning, as we stood at the church, leaning against the big pillars, he said the reason why the drillers won, because Jesus was a driller. <laughs> We're going to have uh, an opportunity to talk and, and, and share stories about my dad um, afterwards at the reception. And uh, each and every one of you made a big difference in my dad's life, and I hope he did uh, in yours. He's leaving behind a great legacy. Thank you.